When life throws you a challenge and you're in a challenge, where does your strength come from? In the business world, and I've been there, um, I use the same rules that I use in working with churches or working at camp. I want to share with you how to have a strong life to have a perspective and power that carries you through the storms and a foundation of wisdom that will give you life directions, truthfulness, and peace. It starts with a daily conversation with Jesus Christ in prayer. When, I, when we were at camp for 20 years and when we, Northern Grace, and uh, when our children were young, Five minutes was a long time for devotions. <laughs> uh, unless you did it as a family at the table. A spirit-filled life is a life lived through us by God, the Holy Spirit. You can't do it by yourself. The goal is to demonstrate and express the character of God, the Son, Jesus Christ. He's not a character. Character is who you are. Conduct is what you actually do. Prayer is the beginning and sustaining of an intimate and personal relationship with God the Father. A lot of, especially young people, um, they don't know that. There's music playing all the time. And some of these uh, places Sonia and I go into, or we went out uh, on a date, and this year we'll be married 60 years. We went out on a date on Friday night, and the music was <laughs> terrible and loud. Um, but an intimate, personal relationship with God the Father. The problem with this is that most people are praying who are not saved. They really have no connection with God the Father. He standing right next to him. Are you listening to me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they don't hear that. Second, saved people often have so much sin in their lives, it just drowns out God's voice. A lot of the Christians are so guilty because they don't know that God, when they trusted Christ, he forgave their sin, past, present, and future. But he does something far better. He forgets the sin. We can't do that. And we can't for a purpose, so that life's challenges, life's results, the end result we need to remember, don't do that again. But it's forgiven. So if you get up in the morning and you say to God, oh man, Lord, I'm so sorry. I really botched that up. And I sinned and I really need your forgiveness. And you're talking that way. He's standing there and saying, Doug, what are you talking about? Yesterday, I forgave that sin a long time ago. What are we gonna do today? But God, it's, a pro it's not a problem. Work with me today. Some people pray for selfish things, not praying for other people, but themselves only. And when your life is only about yourself, um, you're gonna have trouble identifying with God. Finally, not praying for the will of God to be done in their lives. They're scared of that. God, I want to be in your will. <laughs> Show me what to do. And God is saying, here's what to do. Oh, I can't see it. <laughs> you know, we just, we don't want the will of God in our lives. And for that reason, we are often left lonely.